Embark Studios is a game development house with a lot of promise. Being founded and staffed by many ex Dice and Frostbite tech gurus in 2018, the studio has had a hardcore tech focus since its inception. Machine learning for animation and AI, open source code repositories, and of course, ray tracing. But beyond all the tech demos and presentations, I've been wondering in the background all this time, what kind of games are they going to make? And finally, I have my answer with The Finals, an objective-based, team-based, class-based first-person shooter that released free-to-play on current-gen consoles and PC shortly before the holiday break in 2023. It's a rather unique game from a tech perspective, and in today's video I will be focusing on the PC version. What does the game do? What are optimized settings? And how does it compare to console? But before I get into any comparisons, I have to talk about what makes this game stand out, and from my perspective at DF, it is the destruction enhanced gameplay. Basically, in the finals, the levels you play through are made up of prefabricated buildings, typically that can be cracked open and destroyed with your explosive weapons and abilities to clear a path ahead, to give you more maneuvering room, or to deny an opponent cover and concealment. The game is about staying on the move as you go from one objective to the next with your team, and sometimes the best and quickest way forward is just to tear down the wall right in front of you. You can start a match with a relatively pristine level, and you can end with a level where the buildings are almost collapsed and burnt out husks. It has been a good long time since we saw this level of player-driven destruction in a multiplayer first-person shooter. Arguably, the last time it was done to a similar degree was in Battlefield Bad Company 2, which, my goodness, that came out more than 13 years ago now. Yikes! So this type of gameplay has been sorely lacking in the multiplayer FPS space, and if you've had an itch to play a game where the destruction of the environment is a core part of the gameplay loop, well then, the finals should be piquing your interest here. But how does this destruction work? Well, visually and in gameplay, it is not too different from what Battlefield Bad Company 1 did when we saw that game in 2008. In that game, buildings were made up of predefined zones where you could destroy one of the zones with any manner of explosive. And that subsection of the wall would be swapped out with a destroyed version, and this would all be masked with particles and spawned debris. In the finals, you're seeing a very similar system at play here, actually. It just has more pre-cut zones in each house where the geometry can be swapped on the fly and opening a destroyed hole there. In the bad company games, like the first one, it tended to just be huge block sections of a single story being cut out with the explosion. In the finals, you'll get essentially two times the amount of areas that you can cut out on a building. So it is similar technology to like that which we saw in the Battlefield Bad Company series, just with a higher fidelity of what the exploded area will look like and how many predefined holes can be cut in a building. But that is not the end of it. The final levels up over the older Bad Company games by letting you completely destroy a building. If you call in Bad Company 1 and 2, the destruction had its limits. In the first game, for example, houses had static, load-bearing walls which could not be destroyed at all, no matter how many grenades you shot into them. You essentially could not destroy a house. You could just blow out most of its walls. This changed in Battlefield Bad Company 2, where an entire building could be destroyed, but it was limited. You still could not destroy those load-bearing walls. And instead, when the last bottom level's outer walls were destroyed, the entire building went into a destroyed state, where a pre-canned animation would play and the building would fall in on itself while applying killing damage to anyone who happened to be in the building at the time. In the finals, it works differently, and a building can be destroyed totally due to physicalized weighted constraints and not based upon a pre-canned animation. So you can actually blow off big chunks of the building that will fly away and remain there as network physics objects for all players to see and interact with. The upper levels will collapse onto the bottom ones with no pre-canned animation playing, and instead you'll see the big sections of the floor and the concrete remaining there. So the buildings in the final do not have a death state animation. They are procedurally leveled to the ground until they are completely destroyed. So while the technical foundation of the destruction in the finals was seen over a decade ago in those Battlefield Bad Company games, it does go an extra step here and adds even more to the destruction than we saw even back then. In practice, it just leads to a more fun and good looking destruction. 
It's especially awesome as you play as the heavy character class, which can knock down building walls by running through them with a special ability. Buildings, though, are not the only things where destruction can be applied. Bushes and trees can be destroyed just like in those old Battlefield games as well, where here even fire spreads with a propagation system over time, which will cause the trees and brush to be cleared away. When you start looking at the smaller destruction in the finals, I think that's where you start to see some of the corners that need to be cut. For example, when a tree is destroyed in the finals, the destroyed state version of the tree just falls through the level geometry. Here I presume this is done to reduce network and visual clutter. It is a bit of a shame though, because when you go back to BFBC1, trees when broken there would actually fall to the ground and become physicalized objects in their own right. This behavior of destroyed objects just falling through the level geometry instead of turning into physics objects is really the only less than awesome part of the destruction that is found in the finals. Building pieces do have physics applied to them, as I showed off earlier, but smaller destructible detritus like chairs, tables, and more just kind of disappear or have the destroyed replacement geometry fall through the level geometry while a particle effect spawns in its place. So smaller destruction does look and feel less satisfying in practice when you are playing the game. Although it arguably does clear up the visuals since there's no physics objects getting in the way of player line of sight, which is perhaps more important for multiplayer game design. Now there are some smaller destructive elements in the game that are also kind of cool, like how office space ceilings can fall down or how glass breaks procedurally based upon where you shoot it, but the general gist is that you're getting a more amped up version of the destruction than we saw in those Battlefield games of old and most of the environment can be destroyed, within reason. And it looks impressive given the constraints that we're talking about a multiplayer shooter here. Beyond the physics, another interesting technical aspect of the finals is the lighting. Now in the game itself, the levels have randomized times of day and weather when you play them. And in those levels, nearly any and every artificial light source such as lamps and light bulbs can be physically shot out and destroyed and the light will no longer spawn from them. So you can make areas darker if you so please. To make this possible, the game needs real-time lighting and real-time bounce lighting and it cannot rely on traditional pre-baked texture maps, even though it is a great strength of Unreal Engine, which the finals is running on. Instead, the finals leverages RTX GI, also known as DDGI, which is a probe-based global illumination system that utilizes hardware ray tracing to get the results. This global illumination tech has shipped in many games, like The Witcher 3 in its next-gen update on PC and consoles, and here the behavior of that lighting is very similar in the finals, and I can show you how it works. Let's look here, in the game's tutorial. In this house, I've closed all the doors, so you can see it's pretty dark in the house. If I look over here and up, we can see the rope leads up to a second floor, and we can see it's dark up there on the second floor too. So it's suitably dark inside this house. Now I'm going to blow a hole in the roof of the second floor. We can see immediately how light is now flooding inside the house, and the lighting inside the house changes immediately. In that area where the rope led to the second floor, we can now see the skylight from outside streaming in and then bouncing around the inside of the house from outside. In general, this is when you will notice the real-time GI in practice. When you blow open a wall in an enclosed area, you'll notice how the lighting color and look will dramatically change to how it looked before. RTX GI, though, is not exact. It's not perfect. It's probe-based, so it has the issues that probe lighting has in other games. Like here, we can see there's light leaking through the wall, which is a common issue with probe-based GI. It also lacks small-scale precision, so like here we're looking at this little alcove, and you can see that it's very improperly lit since the probe density is not great enough to cover such smaller geometry in a meaningful way. You're going to get real-time GI in this game, but it lacks precision and it only covers diffuse lighting. Specular indirect lighting is still covered by screen-based reflections, which looks okay I guess in those areas where the Q-map fallbacks are well-placed, but I still think SSR looks awkward when you move the camera up and down, or when objects and characters get in the way. Glass, for example, also looks especially awkward in this game, as the lighting being applied there from Q-maps, I think, tends to not line up at all with the environmental conditions or local lighting. So the finals has some awesome physics and even real-time ray tracing to make the lighting work, but it is using old techniques for lighting, and honestly, I would really love something like RT Reflections in this game as an ultra-high-end option. Frag 
getting to the comparison here with the PlayStation 5 version, I want to keep it short and sweet as that version has little bearing on the PC experience. There are some interesting things to note there though. The PS5 uses lower quality shadows than SSR. SSR tends to be the most obvious difference as the screen space reflections on PC's highest settings are variable glossy, so it can show rough surfaces like wood. While on the PlayStation 5, all SSR is rendered as a perfect mirror, more or less. Another thing to note is that the PlayStation 5 version uses RTX GI. As we can see here, compared to the PC version with RTX GI on and off, the off version looks nothing like the PlayStation 5 version, while the PS5 version is closer to RTX GI set to on on PC. So we're looking at a multiplayer shooter with ray tracing on console. That's pretty neat. How is it doing it? Well, it's using settings that are lower than possible on PC. As you can see here, look at me shooting out this light across the various quality settings on PC for RTX GI, and we can see that the update rate for the RTX GI is lower on the lower settings. So as the lamp is destroyed, the bounce light behind the lamp disappears more slowly on the low setting. If we put it next to PlayStation 5, we can see that even the low setting on PC is quite a bit higher than found on the console. It takes longer for bounce light to stabilize on PlayStation 5 due to a lazier probe update. Take the shot here as I blow a hole in the floor above. We can see the light on low on PC updates much faster than on PlayStation 5. So like what I said earlier, whatever PlayStation 5 is doing, it's not really applicable to PC for an optimized setting strategy as you cannot go lower than low here. So then what are those optimized settings for the finals on PC? Well, I've got some real banger optimized settings here brought to you by R underscore pick 16. So first, turn everything down to low as good graphics have no place in a multiplayer game. Then turn off V-Sync so you can get as much screen tearing as possible. Then slap some tape with a crosshair drawn across it across the middle of your monitor for the best no scopes. After that you should be good to go to pwn some noobs. But seriously, as much as I love doing my job, I think most people do not really care about what Alex's optimized settings are for a PC multiplayer shooter. It must be said though, it is possible to play the game at the high settings with RTX GI set to low on an RTX 2070 Super at 1440p with DLSS in quality mode. It will always run above 60 FPS here on the GPU no matter what, and the lowest recorded frame rate I had while playing two rounds was in the 70s, and that was all due to being CPU limited on the Ryzen 5 3600, which is honestly starting to show its age. So to say the least, even with RTX GI on, the game will scale down well to a great range of hardware. And getting those settings in this game is quite a joy, as the game settings menu here is one of those awesome ones that allows you to real-time edit the settings and see them changing in the background. So the PC version here is looking great. And there we have it, this is the end of my shorter video covering the finals on PC. There is some genuinely awesome tech in this game with its lighting and destruction. I would say the PC version also runs really well across a wide range of hardware. I only recorded one shader comp stutter in all of my play and it happens the first time an explosion occurs in the game. And you'll probably see that in the tutorial. The only thing I would like to see more here are better options for image quality, perhaps different upscalers as well as an option for alternatives to TAA. Is the game fun? Well, I had a great time with it while I was playing it and it is free to play, so there's not much to lose by trying it out. So if you want to see some Battlefield bad company like Destruction, I say give the finals a go. But that's enough from me for now. If you did enjoy this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. Support us on Patreon, follow on Twitter, and as always, this is Alex bringing you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.